Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I really wish I wasn't alone in my gross room all the time. I wish I had some of those cat girls I always see in anime to love me. Well, unfortunately, I can't solve that for you, but I know something that can, and it rhymes with Wenko Wara? Okay, fine, this video is about Nekopara. I'm very aware that the title of this video is very hyperbolic, however, I need you guys to just hear me out for one second, okay? But I say this with 100% seriousness. This is an on god, for real, for real, no cap, honest stack stitch we got here. Nickelpar is by far and away the most important game in my entire life, hands down. If I had never found this game, I would not be in the position where I am today. I simply would just cease to exist as a person without this game. If it wasn't for me scrolling through the YouTube app back in like 2015 on my Xbox 360, I wouldn't be the filthy piece of degenerate that I am today, you know, being a fucking VTuber, constantly commissioning loot art of myself and constantly being a horny little gremlin online and screeching about how much I love <laughs> However, it is still debatable on whether that is a good or a bad thing. And I found this game at the very sweet and innocent and very young age of 12. And, you know, I found it through this little known YouTuber. You know, he's not that really big of a deal nowadays. You probably don't know him. He goes by the anime man. That anime man. The one who is a, uh, lolly guy. Wanna be scared of a little four-letter word? But the anime man's playthrough is my first introduction to Nekopara. So imagine a 12-year-old Panky sitting on this gaming floor chair, and I would just sit down for like three hours, and I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna watch Nekopara in, in the, the living, living room, room where my family can all see it. That's just how I spent my nights. It was a great time, honestly. I kind of wish I could go back to that time in my life. What great memories. But for the uninitiated. Nekopara is a visual novel that was released all the way back on the lovely day of December 30th, 2014. And you may say, ah, oh, Panky, what the fuck is a visual novel? I, let me answer that. I will answer that for you. A visual novel is a novel with visuals. Fucking crazy, right? Nekopara is very loosely considered a game. Nekopara is not a game in the slightest. It is a book. And that is where that sentence ends. Now, some visual novels may give you some sort of alternate choice or path or alternate endings, etc. Like the fate visual novels, right? No, Nekopara, you just reading. There is nothing else. Dog, Nekopara tricked me into reading a book with the allure of hot, sexy cat girl porn. What the fuck? Your Honor, Nekoworks tricked me into reading a book. Yeah, but have you seen the Azuki sex scene? She dog, you right. That scene was fire though. <laughs> yeah, who the f reads in the year 2023? If you're reading a book in the year 2023, what the f is wrong with you just listen to a goddamn audiobook holy shit anyway nickel bar doesn't really have any plot to speak of though i mean of course there's the plot right but it is effectively a slice of life series though it has about as much plot as a slice of life series would have holy shit the grocery store arc. oh my god i wonder what they're gonna get oh no the neat main girl of the series doesn't want to go to school. Holy crap. She's just like me for real, for real, guys. But occasionally, Nekopar will throw in some plot points that we follow through the divisional novels. Like, oh, these two sisters don't like each other and they hate each other. So you need to repair their relationship or Vanilla and Chaka are horny shit and they will die unless you don't give them dick. So you better take them to Flavor Town with your fuck in their mouth right now. Things like that, right? But the hook of the series is that you're playing as this guy named Casual who is pursuing his career as a baker so he moved out of his childhood home and surprise surprise in his luggage when he was moving out his two favorite cat girls just made to sneak into his luggage you know and now he's stuck with taking care of two very beautiful cat girls and he doesn't want any part of it for some reason who want to do that right I mean I, I certainly wanted to want, want to take care of these absolute baddies right I mean I genuinely have zero idea why anyone would be mad about taking care of two clingy cat girls. Especially when those two cat girls are this. Yeah. Yeah. 
personally casual is a better man than me because you already know if i just randomly stumbled across a couple of cat girls on the streets that were as hot as chocolate and vanilla you already know i would have pulled out that blicky and been like you're coming with me and this isn't negotiable i completely forgot to mention this by the way in this universe cat girls age just a little bit differently from humans right you know nothing that major but chocolate and vanilla these two very sexy cute and most importantly very adult looking women well they're actually nine months old hell yeah baby time to rob this bank pinky no please don't rob the bank think of the children god fucking Damn! Oh. The thing about Nekopara is that it takes place in a world where humans just casually own cat girls. This is essentially just a slave owner society, but everyone just chill with it. Cat girls need owners, or they will be actively arrested on site. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. You're sheltering them underneath your floorboards, aren't you? Yes. This is racism to the highest degree. The only thing keeping them from being arrested like that is by passing a bell test, which essentially proves that they can function in human society. It's like passing the bar for law school, except instead of becoming a lawyer, you, you just, just get, get rights. rights. Not all rights, but some rights. Effectively, you own two slaves that are technically a different race to you, that are very clingy, you have lewd activities with them, and you make them work for you for free. God, I just fucking love Japan. I want to move to Japan right now right now right now now i've already touched on them quite a bit but the main two cat girls that your character owns in the series are chocolate and vanilla now on one hand we have chocolate where she suffers from dumb bimbo syndrome and she cannot be by herself for more than five seconds without being everything up and most importantly she is an absolute horny sex fiend <laughs> Chocola is your most bog standard waifu of Nekopara. She has big boobs. She has a nice booty. What more could you want in a woman? Am I right, fellas? And on the other hand, we have Vanilla, where she is the sarcastic asshole of the series, where she will constantly bully and berate you and let you know when you're an idiot. And she will call you a horny pastry puffer to your face. And when I was first getting invested into Nekopar personally, I was a vanilla fan at the start. I mean, who isn't a fan of a nice petite girl with a nice budding chest and a nice little curvy butt? If the ice cream duo of cat girls aren't really your flavor, then we have plenty of other cat girls for you to choose from in this series. Starting off with Coconut, where she is the youngest of all the cat girls and she is the most, uh, voluptuous. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Azuki, where she is the, uh not so voluptuous of all the cat girls and she is a tsundere these two will be interacting a lot then we have maple she's normal and on the opposite end of the spectrum we have cinnamon where she is not normal and she is insane and then there are a couple other bonus cat girls like frace and milk but unfortunately we never get an h scene with milk I know, El Nekopara, literal skill issue. However, if you have any semblance of a brain cell at all, then we all know that Azuki is the best and hottest girl in the entire Nekopara franchise by far. Azuki is where it's at, baby, dude. Holy shit, there is a scene. Look, guys, I'm not a piss baby, right? However, hear me out, guys. In Azuki's first H scene, there may or may not be a part in the H scene where Azuki pisses herself out of embarrassment. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that was kind of the hottest thing I've ever seen ever, especially as a seventh grader. That sh was eye-opening. But I know what you guys are really here for, right? You guys want to hear all about that plot, lore, and world building. Don't worry, I got you guys covered. Yeah, but like I said earlier, I was exposed to Nekopar through the anime man, aka Joey from Trash Taste, as some of you might know him. I would religiously watch all of his Let's Play videos of Nekopara, and during some of the spicier moments of the playthrough, it would fade to black and show the aftermath of whatever happened, and Joey would be like, oh, that was probably the R18 scene. And I was like, R18? scene what is that and 
There was probably like a full scene there in the R18 version, but this is the Steam version, so I guess we'll leave it up to your imagination. I'm sure you know what the fuck we did. Come on now. That's what I had the big brain idea to look up each scene on Google to see what the YouTube version skipped. And that, my friends, is how you introduce a fifth grader with unrestricted internet access to the lovely and amazing world of hentai. Every single H scene is absolute fucking cinema. Neckleworks just does not miss. And one of the best parts about the H scenes that nobody talks about is the very specific track called Ibiol, which plays in the background of every single H scene in the entire franchise, no matter what. I love Ibiol. It is like a sleeper agent code for my dick, and it pairs so well with every single one of the H scenes. It's perfect. This is the official Nekopara H scene tier list. So I'm gonna start this off by saying I'm a fake Nekopara fan and I'm sorry. I have barely played volume three and I have touched 0% of volume four. I have however played all of volume one and volume two. At some point, I do plan on playing volume three and four at some point. However, unfortunately, I just haven't gotten around to them. So there are going to be a few entries here where I can't really speak much on them. So we got 10 plus nuts, five plus nuts, less than three nuts, one nut and zero nuts. So we're going to start off with the zero nuts tier. Okay, guys. So that's going to be most of the scenes from volume four and volume three. The scene between cinnamon chocolate and coconut, that goes into the zero nuts category. All of them have big boobs. I'm just a more of a petite guy, you know? That's just how I am, you know? What can I say? Lollies do be kind of fire though. All of the scenes between maple and cinnamon are gonna go into zero nuts as well. Another case of they have big boobies. I'm not a fan of big boobies. Now this scene right here specifically is between Azuki, vanilla, and maple. Like I said, not watch this scene personally. However, this does have three fairly petite characters and it does have Azuki, which is the best girl in the entire series, hands down. So we're gonna put this at the top of the zero nut tier, you know, just in terms of the characters alone, this is an S tier clearly, clearly. but I have not nudged to it personally. Personally. This is another volume four scene between vanilla and chocolate. However, all of those scenes are just absolutely fire. They are super hot. All of them are worth a watch. Same idea with the Azuki and coconut scenes. These ones are also very, very hot every single time they pop up, but that's a volume four one. So I just haven't gotten around to nutting to it, you know? It's on my two nut list. So now we are left with all the scenes that I have nutted to at least one time. So straight up, we're just gonna put Azuki in 10 plus nuts. That's S tier, obviously. So this introduced me to my piss kink. This introduced me to my breeding kink. This introduced me to just how hot petite girls are in general. This one is a S tier. Everything about it is absolutely perfect in my eyes. This H scene right here, this is an absolute classic chocolate and vanilla scene. All of them are great. This one has gone in five plus nuts at least. In fact, let's just get all of the vanilla and chocolate ones out of the way real quick. This one is going in less than three nuts. This is a good one. This is from volume one after the date scene where you take them to the aquarium and that shit was so good oh my god right here so this is the, the volume one vanilla scene and the volume one chocolate scene these two right here are going in one nut each they're good they're really good and especially the chocolate one was fantastic it's just once i discovered the vanilla and chocolate scene at the end of volume one i was like that's my go-to for volume one right there why would you ever pick these two standalone when you have them two together now i know that this contradicts what i said a little bit earlier but the coconut scene in volume two that one is really really good it's because coconut is like the youngest out of all the cat girls and she has this really childlike behavior and like i know that sounds bad i know that sounds bad what no no all right i know that sounds bad that's going to five plus nuts this right here this is another azuki and coconut scene this is from volume three i remember nutting to it at least once i remember it being good but i don't remember much else about it so that's going to one nut all right and lastly we have the volume three chocolate and vanilla scene and i remember nutting to this one at least once this one was pretty good this one pretty solid pretty solid so this is my definitive nekopara h scene tier list 
if you disagree your opinion is invalid and you are wrong thank you this game is just so important to my entire childhood if it wasn't for me discovering Nekopara, i wouldn't be here today so Nekopara, thank you the anime man thank you for introducing me to my degeneracy you're the reason why i'm here today and why i have invested thousands of dollars into being a fox boy vtuber i promise you you'll have a great time if you've never played this series it's a great read genuinely i actually did like the story but then again this is my fifth grader brain talking about where you know booba in my humble opinion knuckle paro was just really important to the whole degenerate sphere of the anime community if you enjoyed this video, go support me on Patreon where you can see the full uncensored version of this video and my previous video, which was about Koikatsu. All the wonderful juicy biddies that you want to see, which will be uploaded onto the Patreon shortly after I upload this video onto my YouTube. Subbing to my Patreon will help me a lot and help me invest in wanting to pursue YouTube videos like these in the long term. Go follow my socials, join the Discord. That's where I'm going to post updates on new videos that go live. Subscribe to my youtube channel you know like and subscribe guys you know go follow me on my new twitter my old twitter got banned because i kept posting up Whoa! anyway guys see ya peace out